expectations. Uh, if I oh, go to graph it right here. Oh. All right, 180 degree rotation. H is negative three, negative five. J is. One. Mr. Jordan, is this right now? No. Okay. Because yeah. we're not rotating around Q, we're rotating around the origin. So if you rotate 180, that's like the other side, right? So if Q rotates around the origin, Q right now is at. Zero one, and if it rotates around the origin, it'll just be at sorry, zero negative one. It'll be at zero one. That's the best. Okay, J right now is at one, two, three, four, five, negative five, negative three. So, where do you guys think it will be if we rotate it about the origin? Um, it's kind of like, uh, if I look at it this way, it's like down five and right three, and then if I flip my head, 180, it would be down five, right three, one, two, three, four, five. So yeah, it's at positive five, three. So what happened to the coordinates? Opposites. So, yeah. Uh, by the way, if... If you're going 180 degrees and you're in the third quadrant, you should always end up in the second quadrant, right? Because it's like on the opposite side of the origin. Uh, so H is at negative three, negative five. So where is it going to end up at? Three, three five. So yeah. uh, one, two, three, four, five. H prime. J. Right. Connect. Oops. Connect the dots. All right. Yeah. So we're rotating about the origin around zero zero. Um. Number two, we're supposed to rotate counterclockwise. So let me draw one. S is at two two, L is at five zero. B is at four five. Okay. Um, so counterclockwise would be which direction? This way, right? So, uh, if it's in the first quadrant now, what quadrant will it end up in? Second quadrant. Oh, sorry. We're going 90 degrees counterclockwise. So it's like a quarter turn counterclockwise. So it'll go like this. It'll end up in the second quadrant. Okay, here's my best advice. So, S, let me grab it, maybe I can't. That's an S. Uh, S is at two, two. So it's like right two and up two. If I turn my head 90 degrees counterclockwise, it should be right two and up two. Does that make sense? Like right two, up two. So that's S prime. You could turn your head 90 degrees counterclockwise, or you could just turn your paper like 90 degrees clockwise. If that makes sense? Instead of turning your head, maybe not. Okay, B is at, uh, I think it was at four or five. So that means it's right four and up five. 
So if I want to go counterclockwise 90, it's going to be, turn my head 90 degrees, it's going to be right for an up five. Right there. So it's actually at negative five, four. So it's kind of hard to, there is a relationship between these two. The, the number switch and one of them becomes negative, but sometimes the X becomes negative, sometimes the Y becomes negative. It kind of depends on what's going on. So a little bit harder to nail down the pattern. Okay, uh, L over here, that's an L, I think. Yeah. L over here is five to the right. So if I turn my head 90 degrees counterclockwise, what is five to the right? Yeah, it's actually up five. One, two, three, four, five. L prime. If you can use your uh, your imagination, you, uh, your spatial imagination, just imagine this like turning around the center of the graph. It should look should look right. What? Did you know that ever some people are reading books? They can't imagine anything. They just see words on paper. They can't imagine any place. Who can imagine things? Goalless people like even this. <laughs> That's where four can think of it. I've never heard of that. I'm not sure I believe that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. Let's jump to the back page. Uh, so on seven, it's 180 degree rotation again. You guys remember what happened on number one to the coordinate? Uh, split. Mm -hmm. They did opposite. So negative to positive. Well, you could mean does the X and Y switch? No. They, they go from negative to positive. So they're opposite. So for seven, Z prime would just be one five. K prime would be one zero. C prime would be negative one, negative one, and so on. So seven, eight, and 10 are kind of easy, but number nine, not so much. So, my advice for number nine, should I do, is just graph S like at one negative four and then try to rotate at 90 degrees clockwise. See if you can figure it out where it's at. So, I'll do, I'll do one. I'll just do one. Just the first one then. So, S is at uh, one negative four. One, two, three, right there. Okay, if we're going clockwise, which direction would that go? Hands of the clock go this way, right? So it should be like over here. Um, so here's my, the way my method was. So it goes right one down four. So you move your head clockwise, or you can just turn your paper, but you basically, you turn your head clockwise and then go 90 degrees and go Right one and down four. Like right there. And and that is at negative four, negative one. So that would be the first uh, point. S prime is negative four, negative one. Uh, number eleven, write the rule to describe the transformation. So how do we get from, remember you go from N to N prime, Q to Q prime. So how are we getting from the thing on the left to the thing on the right? What's happening? Yeah, looks kind of like a slide, but actually it is turning because R is not rotating down to R prime, not up to N prime. But yeah, it's rotating to the right 
that's 90 degrees clockwise. Technically it's about the origin, but all these are around the origin, so it doesn't really matter. But yeah, that is number 11. Uh, and then the, the other sheet is just like a recap of all three things in one. So, yeah, if you have any questions, I'm gonna come around and check your guys' number uh, three. Make sure it's pretty. <clears throat>